you know, like uh, when we started out, uh, and even, you know, uh, and even you know, like if you go and you teach your kids how to learn programming, and you don't give them something fun to do, you know, then they, they, they don't look at it as a creative activity. And one of the biggest things about programming that you learn that helps you, whether you program more in your life or not, is that it helps you learn how to think about a problem and solve it, even if you never write a program to do it. And that's the fun part. And so it's just like creating anything. It's just a new way of creating something. So that's what we want the kids to be exposed to. Whether they're going to go on to code, you know, like uh, you know, like a lot of things or a, little, a few things, they're going to know how the computer works in a way that demystifies or makes the machine simpler to them. And that's very powerful. So. So what do we do next? Well, how many people, by the way, went to the uh, uh, Phoenix Art Museum's video game? Pretty awesome, right? So they have some videos that are up on their YouTube channel that they show in there. And one of the things they talk about is breaking down the, the creative process for gaming into these four steps. Beginnings, inspiration, narrative, and experience. And what we want to do is we want to find out like what inspires our kids, what do they want to create, how can they help each other create something, and how can we you know, make sure they have everything they need to help each other create something. So I really don't want to code for my son. Uh, I already kind of do that for work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to help my son like solve problems that he comes up with. You know? And I'm hoping everybody else is into that too. But, Whatever you want. So, so it's a teaching experience for both the, uh, the parents and the kids. So uh, one of the things uh, is uh, okay. Well, what are we going? How are we going to do that? Where are we going to get information that we can show our kids how this works? And how are we going to get other people aware of us? And one of the things uh, that's very powerful is there's a community called Cutter Jojo that we're going to list the Rose Lane Programming Club in, and we're going to be able to get you know like. Uh, um, help from them in terms of, you know, like simple training and things you can do with your kids on your own, uh, things the kids can do on their own together. And it's got uh, a nice sort of like set of values, so we don't have to worry about, you know, weird stuff. And uh, it's, a, it's an international community, so if there's a problem that you have, you know, there's probably somebody in the community somewhere that's running into it as well. It's not a small community. So, um, so if I'm going to follow that same begin beginnings, inspiration, narrative, and experience model, we're going to we're going to start with scratch. And I'm making a command decision that we're starting with scratch. But if you don't want to start with scratch, you can start with something else. That's fine. <laughs> but uh, what we're going to do with scratch is we're going to create um, some 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 programs together. And uh, the idea there, uh, like uh, I had David draw the robot and we put it in the flyer. And then we scanned it and dropped it in Scratch, and then he made a little animated movie of it. You can come by and see it on, on his computer here. Um, and he did it himself, and then I kind of went nuts on it a little bit too. So, <laughs> but you go back and forth, it's very simple. And it is really powerful. I mean, the amount of things that you can do with Scratch is kind of surprising. Uh, one of the things I want to open up to a quick discussion, and we can continue this uh, um, you know, through email or whatever, is how are we going to meet? Where are we going to meet? How's that going to work? And uh, what we'd like to do is meet at the school once a month, and then you know just sort of share you know information about other meetings and other community, uh, other groups like ours in the community. One of the ones that I went to recently is there's a weekly uh, hacker haven at Burton Bar Library in Phoenix downtown. It's free. Uh, they do have some uh, uh, robotics equipment that they bring to that, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, and uh, that's every week. So if you can't make this, then you can go to that. We can do both, whatever you want. Um, the district has been very interested in what we're starting, uh, and there's groups in other schools that want to get going too. And obviously, uh, Jason and I both have fourth graders and none younger. So um, <laughs> we're looking to kind of get some momentum going and then have the club kind of take off on its own. And that's going to be a, an exercise in uh, collaboration that we can do together. So, um, so uh, we want to include people. Actually, uh, let me back up for a second. So 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. The, uh, the important thing, though, is that um, even a little bit of help uh, is, is, is a big help. Uh, like the, uh, the expression of what many hands make light the work. So uh, the kinds of things we would need is really just uh, um, uh, the uh, ability to sort of, you know, like watch the kids. And have, uh, we, we've got to figure out hardware. Um, uh, one of the things I did for David was... Uh, I bought him a little Raspberry Pi computer for $35, uh, and I already had a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse, and, uh, and he does everything on that, so I didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars. It's a very simple computer. It's very much, it's, 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 it's more advanced than what I learned on, but it's, you know, like way, he can't load games on it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> What's really Raspberry Pi, P-I, like, Pi, like 3.14. Yeah. So, it keeps going from there, I yeah. uh, <laughs> For a while. <laughs> so the, uh, the idea with Raspberry Pi is it's a product that was developed by, I think, Cambridge University and a nonprofit for coding for kids to give kids access to a computer they can learn to code on. You know? And so it's everything about it is geared to exactly what we're talking about doing here. Um, and, you know, like, like any piece of electronics, $35 gets you the Pi computer, which is just a card that has a bunch of jacks on it. If you want a little case, then you might want to buy one of those or make one out of Lego or something. If you want a keyboard, you know. So you might get into like, I think I think at the end of the day, I was at like 140 bucks, but I kind of go nuts on this stuff, so. But you can get started very cheaply. Um, let's see. OK, Hector Haven covered that. Talk, talk about this. Um, we, I, you know, like uh, a couple of folks, and I very much appreciate uh, the emails and the, and the, and the uh, I think it was just email, oh, Facebook comment, I think I got one. Um, if, if you know somebody that'd be interested and you think the kid's able to handle the, the work, you know, your own child, you know, have them invite, you know, come on up. We don't really need to, uh, to the eight-year-old sort of line item I put in the uh, flyer, is really just about the, most of the materials that you'll find that are uh, geared towards teaching uh, um, uh, young, uh, young boys and girls to, to code starts around an eighth grade level, or an eight-year-old level. So it's not uh, you know, like hard to learn younger than that if you're interested. It's just you might need a little more hand-holding, and you might have to figure it out on your own how to present it to yourself. So, um, uh, um, Jason and I are kicking around the idea. This might be something for the sign-up sheet of putting up like a little WordPress site or something. You know, we're not sure how we want to share our progress with each other in between meetings, uh, but with programming, that's actually something that uh, comes up a lot because inspiration strikes, and you need to solve a problem, and uh, you're at your computer already. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we were thinking about doing something like that. Um, uh, the uh, the, the Scratch uh, guys have that sharing system set up, so you can create a, a login and then, you know, like for your child, uh, mm. and under your own email address is how I do, tend to do things. <laughs> and then you can upload and share the files there if you like. Uh, we can also uh, use the uh, Sneakernet uh, solution and just have a thumb drive with your Scratch files on them and, you know, share them with each other that way. So uh, one of the things that I'm really uh, interested in hearing from you guys is um, what do we want to do for the school? 
right? So there's two things we have to keep in mind. One is where the Rose Lane program is brought. And the reason that we're a programming club is because the Rose Lane and the parent teacher organization, the Rose Lane team, let us use their insurance to do this. <laughs> and so um, we can do something for the school. And I don't know what that is, but you guys are going to help us come up with that. And it doesn't have to be something, you know, like crazy, you guys got to help us come up with that. And the other thing is, is when we write programs, sometimes we write programs that act a certain way or say something. And we got to remember that the programs are sort of part of Rose Lane too. And so at Rose Lane we do SOAR. Remember SOAR? Yeah. What's, what SOAR stand for? Safe, organized, accountable, and respectful. There you go. So our programs have to be safe, organized, accountable, and respectful. Now, when David drew his robot, what was on his right arm? Uh, a gun. An arm? <laughs> so then we were like, oh wait, what's, you know, one of the no, things that we're always laying is we can't, we can't have it. It was an arm. Yeah, so we made it an arm because it's no, a Rose Lane robot, arm. right? Okay. Oh, so, we'll take questions at the end. Do you want to change it? All right. So, uh, <coughs> does everybody know what COPPA is? That's the Child Online Privacy and Protection Act. So you can't register, you can't have a website that registers kids under 13 without parental consent. Just so you know. So, I've actually banned David from two gaming sites because he was able to create an account without my knowledge. What? <laughs> yeah. So, so, be aware of that. Because that's, you know, that's somebody else is messing up in that case. All right, so these are the kids' projects. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Hello World program with all the kids that have never created a program before. And I mean that literally. If you've never written a program before, the first program everybody has to learn, this is, this is nerd law. <laughs> so say we all. <laughs> There's a program Hello World on the screen somehow. And, and, uh, and that's, so we're going to do that literally. And then, uh, then they're going to go off and, and, and start coming up with their own ideas after that. And they might do something a little wacky, and they'll probably do something a little concerning, because they're, you know, kids. So we don't judge as a club. The parents judge because <laughs> they do something that shouldn't be done. The only thing that we care about is that we follow the SOAR uh, model of the school. Uh, so... Uh, so reading aloud is a great way to teach your kids about English or, or any language, frankly, right? So coding with your kids is actually remarkably fun, and it's pretty easy. Uh, but ultimately, you want your kid to finish it. So when I was playing around with David's Scratch program, uh, I didn't go all the way to the end and go, OK, we're finished. I just added a little here, added a little there. And then got back out of the way and said, okay, where do you want to take it next? And then we kind of interacted like that. So that's something that, that we're going to, when we help the kids together, we're going to ask everybody to do as well. Just let the kids finish their own projects and tell them they're done. So, uh, okay, and this is probably the biggest question. And certainly with the turnout we've had tonight, and again, thank you guys so much for taking your time to come to that. Is, you know, like, we can really go anywhere. We can make this very big. We can make this a lot of small little things that happen. So we want to hear from you guys about how we want to do that, because we're going to have to do it together. Uh, uh, I can't, uh, you know, like, run a club all by myself. <laughs> I can lead a club, but I can't run a club all by myself. So um, there's a ton of resources out there. Um, we can get uh, some, some trainers. There's probably some parents that would be interested in doing some of that. I know, you know, some professional coders that can help. There's, you know, tons of folks that like to talk about code, especially with kids. Um, obviously, we'd have to check them out. Um, uh, facilities, this room is available tonight, but if we do afternoon meetings, we're going to be at a classroom on campus. I'm working through that with the school, but, you know, maybe we do a meeting in another location one night. You know, I mean, Burton Bar's got that thing going on at the library downtown. You know, who knows what we'll need there. If we want to leave a set of computers set up, you know, for you know, like an evening hackathon, you know, then we'll need a place so we can get in early and, and set them all up, and then we can come in and start writing code. Uh, anybody that's you know, like written code that would be interested in speaking, you know, it's, 
it's uh, what like pretty scary for, for people to do public speaking, but for some reason uh, coders tend to like talking about code. So. Uh, <laughs> computers are uh, always uh, uh, in demand. There's actually been four conversations I've had in the last 24 hours where somebody says, "Oh, I have some computers you can use." You know, so. Uh, the only kind of hold up there is uh, we're not a nonprofit and team isn't set up to take equipment donations. So I've got to figure out how I can accept computers and, and <coughs> pass them on where, the, where it's actually a donation. Now, if anybody, if any of these folks that reached out to me come back with, oh, okay, well, I've got a computer, but it's not like. Um, it's just a computer I was going to throw out. If you guys can use it, great. You know, maybe there's some family uh, or some some friends that could, you know, help you turn it into a working computer that your kid can use. You know, we can have like a like a trade list or something where people could just post what they need. Um, but like I said, we may need to turn it into a nonprofit, and that's it's kind of a time-consuming bit of paperwork, but it, it's not that hard. So. Uh, and then we need electronic kits for robots. And these are actually, uh, how many people have played around with the Lego stuff? Yeah. yeah. I don't mean Legos, I mean the Lego robots. Oh, no. Uh, me neither. They're $300, $400. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but there's lots of inexpensive ways to do uh, robotics and things like that. So, And then we move, uh, the Lego League season ends in, I want to say, April? 